In this session, we're going to take a look at performance monitoring in Event Century, and we're going to monitor a new Windows performance counter. And I'm going to show how we can add a package, add that counter, set up an alert, and how we can review the data that we're collecting in the web reports. Before we go into the actual configuration in Event Century, I'm going to open up the Windows performance monitor. And the quickest way to get to it is really just to do a start and run and type in perfmon. And here we have performance monitor. By default, we see the current processor time. I don't want that. We're going to monitor something else. Um, this is just an example. So I'm going to pick a counter that I can easily control. And that's going to be the number of processes that are running on this system. So under system, we have a number of metrics here. And the one that we're going to pick is simply processes. Hit OK. And we can see here. Um, the number of processes is currently 164 and it you know jumps up and down as new processes are being created if we hit control h then that line becomes black i'm going to change uh, this here a little bit i'm going to change the scale to one otherwise it can be a little confusing and of course we're going to change the vertical scale to 200 uh, because we want that to be higher than the number of processes and here we can see now that uh, basically the number of processes is always seems to be between 164 and it seems to spike here a little bit when uh, in periodic interval something happens. Okay, so how do we monitor this in event entry? And let's just uh, come up with a arbitrary rule. We're going to say we want to get alerted if the number of processes is higher than 180 on average. So we're going to go back into events entry, create a new package, of course. Uh, we're going to call it process count. Assign this to our events entry server here. Adding a performance object. We're going to add a new counter. And we're going to pick here, uh, click the browse button. Same dialog that we saw in the Windows performance monitor is here. I'm going to go to system and pick the processes again. And we're going to have to give this a descriptive name. So this is so that you can combine uh, multiple or, or different types of counters into a single name that makes sense to you. Okay, you could call this the same as the Windows counter. But uh, if, especially when you pick SNMP counters, for example, they don't really have a name. So in order uh, to organize these performance counters in Event Century, uh, we're also providing a custom name. And I'm just going to call this System Processes Count. Again, you can call this anything you'd like. We're going to monitor this every second. And we're going to enable the alert and we're going to say if it's more than 180 for one minute that's when we want to get an alert if we do get an email alert we'll get a chart to show we're going to record this in the database i'm going to pick a low interval here every five minutes and we're going to keep the history so we have history of the processes and we're going to write this to the primary database all right so every second we're checking this counter system processes and if the number is higher than 180 for one minute, that means the average number of processes has to be higher than 180 for one minute. And then we want to get an alert. As always, deploying the configuration and we're going to wait for the agent to pick up that updated configuration with the event 1035. And here we are. So another number hovers around 160. And we're going to create a few processes now to get that number up. This is a remnant from a different screencast here. Now if we go to our performance monitor, we can see how the number of processes is going up here. Let's take a look at event entry under the alerts here. Nothing really yet. I will right, we'll keep launching a few more these processes so we can get. So we're just above 180 here. 
definitely above 180. If we can now go back into the management console. We're going to have to wait a little bit. Again, it's looking at the value every second, but it's requiring the average to be higher than 180 for one minute. So this usually takes about one minute before the alert gets triggered. So we're hovering at around 187 here. And here is the alert. So it's telling us that the average is just 181 now. So we just tripped the limit here. The maximum was 200. So at some point, the value of 200 was observed. And now we're going to close all these instances. I'm going to wait to see uh, Event Sentry clearing the alert again. So when, so when Event Sentry notifies us that a performance counter limit has been exceeded, it will also notify us again once that value is back in a safe zone below the alert threshold. But of course, that will take a little while because again, it is looking at the average values of the last minute in this case. So just by reducing the counter value right now to 160 is not going to immediately clear the counter because the average is still going to be potentially over 180, especially with these spikes here. But here we are, so it's normalized now. So it took about a minute and 20 seconds. Now it basically tells, okay, the performance counter uh, on host events is back below the threshold of 180. And in here, we have the actual values. So that's really how easy it was to set this up. I already have this pre-populated here. So if I take a look here, I can also view the values here in the database. And you know, the interval was five minutes. So we can see that here. We're getting a value every five minutes of these counters. So now we have this information being written to the database and we have alerts being generated in the event log. If we wanted to now get a alert when this counter goes up, then we'd have to set up a event log package that looks for this information. Now, if we already have a filter in place that forwards warnings, then that would be covered that would catch that alert here as well. But if we don't, well, then we have to create a new package and look for these two events. So let's create a new package here and we'll call it process count alerts. I'm going to collapse these here. I'm going to assign this again to the local computer. And since we have these events here, I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to say add include filter. I'm going to pick the package that I just created, process counts alert. And I'm going to call this filter too many processes. Again, you can give this filter any name you'd like. We're going to send it to the desktop. And we're going to customize this a little bit more. So of course, this is the default information, the performance monitoring and the event ID, but we want to only trigger or trigger this alert if we're actually looking at this very specific counter that we created. So if we look at 12104, it shows us the name here, process count, system processes count. That's the descriptive name that we gave it. So that's the package name and then the name of the counter. I'm going to filter it based on that. I'm going to use the insertion string match. The string we're looking for is string number five within the first quotes. So five here. Here's the name. And we're going to actually cover the other event as well. So if we look here to 12154, let's just say we want to get alerted an email from that as well. That's going to be an informational event. So we have to check this box here. We're going to add a comma so we can specify multiple event IDs. And now we're going to just make sure that when we have the 12154 event, that it has the same number and does not. So here the performance counter is actually, uh, name is actually logged under insertion string number four. Well, we can change this very easily. We're going to simply 
and copy this into the clipboard again and we're going to say okay well if this name matches either number four or five and that's perfectly acceptable then it's going to send this to the desktop you could also set up two filters of course too many processes or process alert and process cleared and then look for these specific insertion strings or we could also simply go in here and say wildcard match put in an asterisk and put this in here and that would be another way to match this so there are multiple ways we can configure this i set it up this way but that's probably a lot more on work than we really need so i'm going to simplify this here just like i said i'm going to say wildcard match and use this but i wanted to illustrate how we can use these insertion strings so i'm going to deploy this now if we go back to the application event log we should see another alert here again slightly over the limit and I'm going to close all of these instances again count goes down immediately of course but now we're going to uh, take a look here and wait to see if we get that desktop alert on the bottom right there we go the alert is here it says the performance counter uh, so and so is back below the limit of 180. So that filter that we created uh, worked just fine. And we can see the alert here as well. You may have noticed that every time we start the calculator, um, we also get a little desktop alert at the bottom right. Uh, that can be a little bit uh, confusing and that kind of obscured the alert um, for the initial 12104 event that we had. exactly this one here so i'm going to go and look at our actions here click desktop right click that and i'm going to say show all filters referencing this action so it's pre-selected here I'm going to hit the find button and here we have a calculator launch and calculator exit here so this is something from an earlier test so i'm going to undersign this simply going to click here so now uh, we won't be getting this particular alert here anymore when we start uh, the calculator process in the meantime we can go back here to performance history we can observe the values here so we can see here okay we actually got it up to 184 at some point this was the time in between our tests but yeah that's how easy it really is to monitor a performance counter in windows Again, just to summarize here, we created a package here. We added this counter here. We configured a alert threshold, writing it to the database, higher interval than the actual than the actual monitoring interval. So this interval here always has to be higher than what we have set here, of course. Obviously, we can't be collecting the data every, for example, minute and write it to the database every 30 seconds. So this will have to be higher. And then to facilitate the alerting we simply created a package here pre-fill it with the event ids that are being logged when this counter goes up keep in mind that these event ids may change depending on the type of counter that you're monitoring if you are monitoring a counter that has instances so that for example would be something like a process right so if we go look at process here and we pick for example the processor time we'll notice that there are instances available here so when we are monitoring instances then event entry will log a different event id here but in any case we simply created a filter specified the action and uh, that's how easy it is to get alerts emailed or sent to a desktop for example uh, when your performance counter exceeds a threshold